Hey everyone, it's Brian from Strugler Photography. If you use shoot proof to show your clients their photos and then they also use it to select their photos, I've got a little tip that's going to help you save a lot of time. So this, this tip is all about getting those selections from shoot proof back into Lightroom so you know which photos you're going to edit and then give to your clients. So this is the search method and it really can save you a ton of time. But first you have to do a few things to make this work. And the thing is you're gonna have to make the names of your files in a certain way or this search method will not work. So here I am in Lightroom and I'm going to prepare my files. Now the big thing with this, you cannot have spaces in your file name and you need to have multiple digits. If you don't set up your files correctly, you're gonna end up getting a bunch of files you don't want when you try to search. So, the first thing I'll have to say is, if you wanna leave your files as the original name created by your uh, camera, you can. The only problem with that is, if you have all your photos in one catalog, eventually you're gonna get a name that's been used before, so I just decide to rename my files to make it easier. So here I am in Lightroom and I've got all these files selected. So I am going to go up here to Library. I'm gonna to go to Rename Photos. Now, this has already changed a little bit. So there's all these options you can do. And if you do it this way, you wanna make sure when you're looking at the bottom See right here, this is gonna be a problem for us because it only has one digit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up so that it has multiple digits in here so we don't have a problem. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this drop down menu, you're gonna go down to edit, and see how it says custom text, sequence, but it only has one digit. If you click this drop down menu, you can change how many digits are going to be in it and four digits should be plenty. So I'm gonna click that, and then I'm gonna hit done. Now notice, instead of just having dash one, we have dash zero, 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 one. And this is going to make sure it does not mess up. So I'm gonna name this whatever, I'll just put wedding, and it's gonna say zero, 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 one. So now it's going to rename all of those files and we should be good to go. I'm now over here in shoot proof in my album section and there's one thing I really wanted to emphasize before we got started on this part. You have to do the file prep, the renaming before you put them into shoot proof and before your client makes a selection. You can't go back and rename them after they've already been uploaded, after the client's made a selection, it won't work. So that's why I was saying do the, the prep, the renaming first. All right. So here we are, I'm going to go to this album right here and we are gonna go find um, all the photos that the client selected. Go to Action, Gallery Visitors, and you'll see an email address and you'll see their favorites. So you click on the number and it's gonna take you to the page and you'll see all the images they favorited. You'll see the image, you'll also see the file number. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you get this giant list of files. These are all the files they selected. And we are going to take that list and we are going to use it to search for them back in Lightroom. So all you'll have to do is select them and copy. Now one warning, this isn't very many files. Um, when I'm doing a wedding, my clients will usually select 200 any, up to maybe 500. If you select all of them at once, it may freeze Lightroom. So I would usually select a maybe 100 at a time or maybe even less than that and then do that bunch and come back and do another bunch. Okay, so once you have them selected, you copy. So I'm gonna copy and then we will jump back over to Lightroom. Now we're back in Lightroom and you want to make sure you are in the library module and you also want to make sure you can see this little bar here at the top. Um, if you hit the backslash key, it will appear and reappear. 
So if you don't see it, just hit the backspace and it'll pop up. Next, you're gonna click on text and then you have this little field show up. You wanna change where it says contains all to just contains. Okay, now I'm gonna warn you right now, I purposely set this up so we're gonna have a mistake. So I just wanna show you how that works. So I'm gonna paste that list and it is gonna start searching. All right, so <laughs> it did it really quickly. And if you notice down here at the bottom, it has found 1,245 photos. And if you remember, we only were looking for 24. So here's the reason why this happened. Let me sh jump back over and show you that list. I purposely put in here two, uh, two files that were going to cause a problem. And they're right here at the bottom. So here's the one, wedding one, which I told you you have to have multiple digits. So let's just search for that one and see what it does. And notice we get 245 photos with wedding one instead of just one photo. And if you look at all these files, what you're gonna see is they all start with a one. And that's because it found wedding dash one and all these files have wedding dash one in it. Okay, let's look at the other one real quick. So this one's gonna be worse, I think. We'll see, I may be wrong. Okay, let's paste in this one. And now we have every single photo because it's finding everything with the word wedding in it because we have that space there. So this is why you have to be careful when naming the files or this search method will not work. I'm gonna jump back over here. I'm gonna select everything except those two files that are messing it up. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna jump back over here. I am going to paste it. And we should have 22 files, perfect. So you see how when you do this correctly, when you name the files correctly, how quickly you can find these files. And it's so much faster than other ways. So now that I have them over here, I can select them all and I can mark them however I want. And I'm pretty much done with the process and that is really easy. You just have to make sure you do the steps correctly, um, but it's going to save you a ton of time getting the selections from ShootProof back into Lightroom.